Good morning, my name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting additional details on the latest news from TriStar Gold. The company is advancing Brazil's premier gold development project, Castelo de Sonhos, which is located in the mining-friendly Para State, Brazil. The company trades on the TSXV under the symbol TSG. And joining me today is TriStar's president and CEO, Nick Appleyard. Nick, how are things going? Very well, very, very well, thanks, Megan. Yesterday, you announced that drilling has started in the form of a 2,500 meter program at the Castelo de Sonio School Project. Can you give us a little bit of an overview of this program and target areas for drilling? Absolutely. So, um, you know, we're sort of very obviously very excited to be back drilling for the first time in a little while now. And um, I will just advance a couple of slides here just to use them as talking points as I, as I go through the program a little bit. So, yeah, we're doing a, a 2,500 meter program. Um, aimed at expanding the, the economic heart of the project in Esperanza South, um, which is what you can see here in this image. Um, you know, the idea is to find the limits of it, find the high grade channels and, and, and see how far we can push it. You know, with some of the holes, you know, a couple of the holes being more than a kilometer away from the previous drilling and, and, the, and the current reserves. And this program has also been put together in conjunction with Gold Spot Discoveries, who you've been working with for a number of years. So for new listeners, could you discuss the use of AI targeting at the project? Yeah, no, it's, it's fascinating because a lot of our resource estimation and the work that went into the pre-feasibility study came out of AI. And this is really the first time we're getting to use it to target new drill holes. Um, and it's fascinating. I mean, it's it sounds scary. It sounds a little black boxy and witchy. But in reality, the way I like to explain it is classically, a geologist would have a light table and a map, and they would put a, you know, another map on top, and they can see through the light table to see two layers of information. All we're doing with the AI is really having the computer seeing maybe 100 or 200 layers of information at the same time, which a geologist can't do, and integrate all of that information together. So you're getting a lot deeper analysis. Um, you know, and so out of this 2,500 meter program, um, you know, sort of 80 percent of it has purely come out of the AI. The other 20 percent is our geologists looking because everything is a collaboration between the field geologists and AI. Either mm -hmm. one on their own can can be improved with help from the other side. So, you know, we are looking for, um, you know, the, the best of both worlds, really. And in terms of news flow and expected results from this program, what's the runway looking like for news flow from this drilling? And what do you want interested parties or shareholders to know going forward into the summer and fall time? Yeah, we, you know, during the sort of the COVID period, which hopefully we're out of now, the labs were getting really, really slow and locked down. Hopefully that's not too much of an issue now, but you know, we haven't submitted any samples. So we don't really know. Um, but, you know, we would hope to be submitting samples in the next few weeks and there would probably be a, a 45 day turnaround um, before we get the first ones back. Then we have to analyze our QAQC, make sure the results are appropriate and, 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 we, and we, we can trust them. And, um, you know, then we would sort of look, look to publish. So realistically, results will start coming or we now begin in July, sort of sometime mid August and, and really be flowing through the end of the year here that even though the drilling will go quite quickly, the the results will lag because it takes time to cut the core and, and, and get it. All, all the work we're doing on this core is, means it takes a little while to get it out. So we'll have results through November. Okay. And um, what we expect to learn is, you know, where are the high grade channels go? That's really the, really the core of this. Um, you know, Esperanza South, you know, had a, had a grade of 1.3 in our, in our PFS reserves compared to 0 0.8, 0 0.9 in the other parts of the deposit. We want to expand on that. Um, and, um, you know, and that's really what we're chasing. See if we can find more material, you know, well over a gram, hopefully significantly higher if we can, and, um, and, and see how much more life we can get out of Best Friends of South. Um, the other critical part on it is to get it into the planning now so that it rolls straight into the permitting that we're doing right now, um, you know, which is obviously a critical part of the project. But you don't want to drill a hole you know, after you've received your permit, you go, oh, by the way, I want to change that. You know, it's too late then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so that's the other reason for focusing right now on Esperanza South. <clears throat> Are there, before we wrap things up, is there anything else you want to sh show us in the slides? Absolutely, yes. So okay. we sort of talked about the, you know, the reasoning there for talking, you know, looking at Esperanza South. But I did just want to show this slide, which is, is you know, it's from a report you know, that we received from Goldspot, where they've, you know, 
um, done their summary of where they see the targets for high prospectivity. Um, and you can see there's four zones, and obviously Esperanza South is zone one, um, mm -hmm. but there's zone two, three, and four, which we've still got to hit. They're just there because of the permitting, because of the PFS bases that we're moving on, adding on to, you know, we've prioritized zone one, but there's still a lot more to look on here. And, you know, like that's all come out of AI that I think you're looking at gold in soils on that map, plus the machine learning and, and the you know, artificial intelligence all points to those areas as having um, what they call them high priority exploration targets. So there's a lot more to go beyond this program. It's not like we're sort of forgetting the rest of it, just doing Esperanza South. This is the highest priority now because of the permitting and the, the economics of the project. But then beyond that, you know, there's obviously a lot more to explore. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Nick. Uh, I would look forward to hearing more from you very soon about this program. And I appreciate your time. No, thank you. It's always a pleasure. And yeah, we will look forward to getting out and, and describing the results as they come out.